CSS, I've seen similar apps built on IPFS. Is the primary benefit of Hyper the versioning or have recent changes also made it more performant all around than IPFS? I can't, to be honest, draw a super direct comparison in terms of performance or capability benefits or anything like that, um, mainly because both of the technologies move pretty quickly. And um, so something that may be true at one moment may not be true long uh, for another moment. Um, frankly, if I were pressed, I think the thing I would say that's different is just different approaches, different code st uh, styles, uh, different um, API styles. IPFS is a highly generic design. It's a neat design. Um, it just has a different philosophy. With IPFS, the basic idea is they're gonna use uh, content hashed data as their primary primitive, right? So um, they're gonna be using um, the idea of generating this kind of static thumbprint, the, uh, the content hash. I suppose they probably use something like a SHA-512 or something like that to produce a, a content identifier for a static piece of information. Um, that's their core piece. Everything that they do is built off of that. And so then if you have, um, you know, when you're creating data structures, you're creating what they call the Merkle DAG, um, which is uh, sort of a giant uh, data structure where every time you create a new um, piece of information in IPFS, it gets its fixed ID that should never change. And then when something points to it, it's creating a graph pointer to it. So that's where the DAG comes from, directed acyclic graph. And I'm in the weeds now, so let me bring it back point about this is that IPFS starts from that really kind of basic primitive. It's a highly technical idea and builds everything on top of that. And so for dynamic data in IPFS, they'll create a public key and they'll point to one of the IPFS hashes, their static hashes, and that's how they do data that changes over time. That's the basic premise. Now, if I had to kind of contrast that to what Hypercore does, really the IPFS approach is just more generic. Um, a uh, content hash design can be used to kind of construct any sort of data structure you like, including a log similar to what we do with uh, the Hypercore protocol. So what's different about the Hypercore protocol is that it doesn't start from this idea of just the individual chunks of data with their content hashes. Instead, uh, Hypercore starts at a slightly higher level. In Hypercore, you are always working with a log of data, every time. The Hypercore is the lowest level piece in the system, um, and it's a higher level abstraction than the IPFS chunk of data. It is a log, um, and the logs have a public key as their address. And so the um, everything that we build on top of Hypercore is built on top of these logs, as similar in a way to Git. And so uh, whenever you build something on top of Hypercore, what you're doing is you're building it on top of this log to create a new data structure on top. I could speculate about some of the benefits of taking the Hypercore approach versus the IPFS approach. It, broadly, I think there is some niceties to having um, Hypercore be a little bit less generic because we're able to build network flows that are really nicely custom tailored to the Hypercore structure. So we can kind of focus on making sure that Hypercore logs transfer as efficiently as possible over the network. In practice, I couldn't, I don't want to stand too strongly against that because I don't know what kind of optimizations the IPFS world has done and it's entirely possible that they've caught up to any kind of difference that that would make. So it may not be, uh, it, is, it is a little bit like SSB plus IPFS. It's very, very much like that. Uh, we don't do a linked list for the logs. We actually use a Merkle tree turned on its side, which is important for efficiency reasons. Um, but the, um, but that's, uh, but yeah, so like IPFS is, is just a more generic approach. And um, so in a way, I think the code kind of reflects that. Hypercore is very modular, to be sure, um, and you know, hopefully is going to be open to people doing lots of things, but generally we kind of approach everything from a higher level. We don't, you know, in a way, uh, in my experience, whenever I look at IPFS, it feels a little bit more technical, a little bit more complicated than uh, using the Hypercore tools. I am super biased, so, you know, um, and there's something incredibly elegant about the IPFS approach, so don't get me wrong, I think it's a pretty neat idea. Um, so that's, that's kind of my rundown of the Hyper versus IPFS world. It's um, not a, hu a super huge difference, to be frank. Um, and uh, I say use whichever one you're feeling, you know, it's just your vibe.